Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this occasion. I'm happy to be here, and uh, thank you for uh, inv invitation. And uh, I'm in civil law, and I'm Jack Waltrace, and for the last uh, decade, I've been working on uh, property, property theories, uh, focusing on housing or urban issues. Or on the other hand, I've been working on uh, reparations as a flip side uh, of coins of uh, properties. And I'm also working on health law as well on that. As you know, the civil law is the main course uh, uh, related to the ordinary life and from family law, contracts, torts, property, or whatever. And uh, uh, today I'm going to talk about, as uh, two professors uh, mentioned, uh, the reparations and reconciliations. And in spite of uh, theoretical and uh, uh, pragmatic or political uh, importance of this field, uh, and I think uh, reparation is going to be one of the most important issues of tort law, but uh, I don't know what kind of uh, tort law course you're taking, but uh, still in civil law uh, scholarship, the reparation has been uh, still marginalized. And it's, it's odd. You know, the, as Raj mentioned, the comfort women issues is, uh, is a very common topic in newspapers almost every day. Uh, but in uh, legal academic field, not many, not many legal scholars. Uh, have conducted research uh, on this topic. And I myself, about a decade ago, I was at uh, uh, Harvard, and at that time there were a lot of uh, uh, debates uh, on reparations started. Uh, and I've, uh, uh, I've, I must have been stimulated uh, by the reparation debates in the United States, and I. I want to apply those debates into the Asian context. Uh, that's uh, what I'm going to say. And, uh, and uh, this is my, actually this is my first visit at India myself. And a couple of days ago the, uh, in Delhi at the Lalit Hotel, the, the big event, big event of re recruiting the Indian students to major Japanese universities. Uh, the number of uh, Indian foreign students in uh, studying in Japanese universities is still limited. But I think uh, uh, China and uh, India is uh, the two uh, biggest uh, and uh, powerful countries in the 21st century. So uh, all of you are welcome to uh, doing research to, in, in Japan. So, uh, and uh, today is the, uh, as some of you know, the uh, Hiroshima uh, Memorial Day. There are many people there have been killed uh, uh, August 6th uh, by the atomic bomb. And uh, recently, uh, the Jap Japan has been attacked uh, by another uh, nuclear disaster. I'm working on disaster recovery uh, field as well, so I've been uh, to the devastated area uh, many times. Okay, and uh, uh, yeah, I already talked. Uh, and today's uh, lecture, I try to, to deal with uh, some of the Indian reparation cases such as uh, religious crash in Gujarat in recent years, and uh, uh, Bhopal tragedy in the 1980s, or uh, on the other hand, the infringement of the uh, traditional uh, knowledge in India as uh, some of the reparation cases here in this country. And this is a location of Hokkaido. Uh, it's located up north in Japan, about one hour and a half flight from Tokyo. 
And uh, this is the, our campus uh, in winter time. And uh, uh, Hokkaido is the best place to live and best place to do research. And uh, very comfortable in summertime, and, but snowy in winter time. Uh, very snowy. So uh, if you come to Hokkaido University, you can uh, live uh, 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 the, the exotic life. <laughs> uh, very different uh, life uh, in Sapporo. Oh, sorry. Uh, what? Uh, oh. oh, just this? Okay. This is a picture of Furano, the center of Hokkaido in the summertime. Very beautiful. Hokkaido is the, one of the uh, tourist spots. Uh, a lot of uh, Japanese as well as uh, foreign visitors, tourists, has come uh, to Hokkaido. And right now, the, the Hokkaido is the island of uh, resort, uh, island of leisure or uh, island to enjoy beautiful scenery, uh, but it used to be uh, island, an island of tragedies. Um, this is uh, the the professor uh, Fang Yipian. The he's a uh, uh, pro professor emeritus of the medical school of Gansu uh, University, located south of China. But he used to be a forced slave laborer in, in a, uh, near Yubari area. In, he, he used to be a slave uh, coal miner. At the age of 14, he was arrested in Shanghai and forcibly deported to Hokkaido uh, to work as a slave laborer. And there are uh, 58 out of 135 uh, Chinese slave laborers site in Hokkaido. And of course, there are a lot of uh, Korean slave laborers uh, were deported from Korean Peninsula uh, in those days. And, but after coming back, uh, after World War II, uh, after coming back to China, he studied diligently and uh, become a medical professor afterwards. And this is a picture of Jeju. Uh, Jeju Island is located in, in the uh, south of the Korean Peninsula. Jeju is also a number one uh, resort area, uh, island of uh, tragedy, uh, island of leisure, and, uh, uh, but it's also uh, an island of tragedy. Uh, in Jeju, in the late 1940s, uh, for about five years, uh, there's a mass killing uh, in this small island. More than, more than 30,000 people have been killed, uh, uh, kill, killed there. Uh, and it was considered at that time uh, the island uh, of communists. It's uh, uh, the, uh, at the forefront of uh, Cold War at that time, then shortly afterwards, uh, the Korean War started. And so, uh, in this lecture, I'm going to uh, deal with, the, uh, in spite of time limitations, uh, uh, slave labor issues, comfort women issues, or bombings issues, slave, uh, pest, pest war, or uh, Ainu reparation. Ainu is the indigenous name of indigenous people in Hokkaido. And they also had a miserable uh, history in Hokkaido. Uh, still, a lot of Ainu uh, people uh, in Hokkaido. And Hokkaido is the land of Ainu uh, uh, before Meiji Restoration, before uh, 100 years ago. But uh, Japanese mainlander invaded Hokkaido uh, and conquered the, the land of Hokkaido. So, of course, the, the reparations problems is lurking, as you may gather. So, um, uh, we have had a uh, uh, project 
uh, of global peace uh, making networking uh, among islands of tragedies and uh, I myself have a long term uh, relationship with uh, uh, the one pro professor of Jeju University who is a leading scholar about the Jeju tragedies. In Hawaii, as you, I will show you, uh, also have the similar stories. And uh, uh, in working on reparations, so what, uh, why am I work on these issues? Uh, there are uh, three purposes. Uh, first, uh, uh, we are working on reparations uh, to attain reconciliation, not to fight, uh, not to increase uh, the fighting. The second, uh, we want to think about the multiple purposes uh, of the law of tort. And uh, relatedly, third, the atonement factor uh, as a purpose of tort law has been marginalized. Uh, the, the, okay, sorry. Traditionally, as the purpose of tort law, uh, as you learn, as you might learn, the first, the compensation exposed monetary compensation is the first uh, purpose. And secondly, ex ante prevention, uh, deterrence of tortious behavior. And third, punishment or sanctions of tortious act. But in the field of reparation, the fourth moment of atonement, that's the moral repentance from the perpetrator's side, uh, has been uh, taken close up in reparations debate. But uh, in the ordinary thought course, as you know, the, the moral regret or atonement factor has been marginalized or almost neglected in thought law uh, field. And uh, relatedly, the, the importance of apology as opposed to uh, monetary compensation uh, should be emphasized. Uh, sincere apology uh, should be emphasized in this field. But uh, as I mentioned, in spite of its interdisciplinary studies, already there are a lot of uh, 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 interdisciplinary studies on apology. For example, from the, the, from the psychology, uh, or from the literature uh, expert, or, or from, of course, the pol pol political scientist, or from the sociologist. Uh, but uh, in the legal field, in the legal academics, the importance of apology uh, is uh, still neglected. Okay, so. Okay, we start. And there are already, uh, as I uh, implied, uh, the uh, abundant uh, examples of reparations in East Asia. Uh, and uh, a number of legal uh, cases have been uh, uh, filed, but almost all of them have been turned down. Uh, and I uh, will examine the reason why they've been, uh, they are not successful. But in the uh, neighboring uh, countries, such as in Korea, uh, there have been revolutionary re development there. For example, the political inaction with regard to comfort women sex slave practice that infringes the basic human rights of the victim is considered unconstitutional by the decision of a Korean Constitutional Court uh, in August uh, 2011. And second, the reparations for slave labor at the Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi Steel Company uh, have been admitted 
contrary to the Japanese uh, Supreme Court. Because the, the reference of prescription is abuse of right, and uh, the issue is outside of the immunity clause of the Japan-Korea Treaty uh, in the mid-1960s. By the decision of Korean Supreme Court in May uh, 2012. And shortly before the, that uh, big decision, I had a chance to talk, to give a lecture at the Korean, Korean Supreme Court uh, to the Supreme Court justices there uh, and the law clerks there. And that was, uh, I, I talked in Octo o October 2011. And uh, uh, I, I was very surprised to realize that the Korean Supreme Court, there are so many, so many uh, law clerks and Supreme Court justices there who are interested in the reparations. Uh, and the situation uh, there in Korea is very different than that in Japan. Okay, it's the same picture. So uh, the aim of uh, reparation studies, as I already indicated, is to think about, let's think about, uh, by working on this field, how we can change the cycle of hatred to reconcile the relationship between antagonistic nations or antagonistic groups, and how the process of building normalized relationship is uh, from the relational pers perspective. I myself, the the student of Professor McNeil, who is a, a prominent relational contact theorist in the United States, who is from Scotland, and he's my first mentor. I originally worked on contract theories, and then moved to property theories uh, since the mid-1990s when I was at Stanford Law School. And, but I, I was, I was covering uh, different fields, uh, even uh, health law or reparations law, from the relational perspective. So relational perspective is, is, my, is the backbone of my legal scholarship. So, uh, okay, there are a lot of uh, uh, reparations uh, uh, examples in the world. And uh, uh, Professor Patna uh, asked me about the impression of Gandhi museums. Uh, uh, actually, I've been very much influenced by his philosophy uh, of nonviolence non and uh, uh, civil disobedience. The one uh, picture uh, said the conquer via conquer anger by non-anger, or conquer anger by love. So, so love or forgiveness is a key concept when we approach uh, this field, according to the recent scholarship uh, uh, in, this, in this field, as I show you later. So the, the Holocaust and the apartheid is the two uh, leading cases. And uh, uh, many of you already know uh, a lot about Holocaust. When you uh, visited Washington, D.C., there's a nice Holo Holocaust museum. Uh, but uh, secondly, the, the Nelson Mandela's philosophy a, a for, forgiveness. He he took a uh, amnesty approach. That's uh, very impressive. Uh, that's very contrasted to to the retri retributive the justice approach or the traditional criminal law approach. Uh, and uh, uh, in recent scholarship, you, many of you uh, might have heard about restorative justice as opposed to retributive justice. So uh, restorative justice approach is uh, very much related to his uh, 
uh, amnesty approach that is based on the African Ubuntu uh, community uh, uh, forgiveness uh, philosophy. So uh, Nelson Mandela also uh, himself had been influenced uh, by the uh, Mahatma Gandhi's uh, philosophy. Uh, as many of you know, the Mahatma Gandhi uh, uh, stayed in South Africa and he was arrested in a train near Durban. I, I myself visited uh, South Africa twice and there's, I visited uh, Gandhi settlement in Durban. Uh, it's, uh, that, uh, that place is also an impressive place. So this picture is uh, the prison. The, the Nelson Mandela uh, was incarcerated uh, in this small cell uh, for 17 years. And the light is on 24 hours uh, to, to look, to uh, over, oversee uh, the activities uh, the, uh, of the of prisoners. And uh, uh, it was, it, it's, it's in the, uh, the Robben Island. It's about 20 kilometers away from Cape Town, as you know. It's, uh, uh, the site of World Heritage. And uh, uh, the, there's a very uh, interesting, impressive movement in Australia with regard to, to indigenous people there called Aborigines. Uh, the uh, Australian government made sincere apology uh, uh, to uh, regarding the stolen generations issues uh, uh, recent, uh, recently at uh, the government of Kevin Rudd uh, by the Prime Minister Kevin Rudd. And as I mentioned, uh, I've learned a lot uh, from the, the reparation debate in the, in the United States. So uh, in the United States, the Japanese American internment camp case is the is a leading case, and also uh, the they have uh, reparation uh, regarding indigenous people, uh, such as American Indians or Native Hawaiians, and a lot of debates about slavery. And this is the 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 Japanese American National uh, Museum in Los Angeles. And there are a lot of good exhibits there and uh, uh, to know about uh, uh, the internees' uh, uh, life in those days. And uh, this is a monument uh, about the reparations. Uh, on Japanese American internment uh, camp case in Washington DC near Union Station. And in case of native Hawaiians, uh, uh, the, the kingdom, the kingdom, uh, original kingdom was toppled down uh, at the end of 19th century and annexed in 1898 uh, as the 50th uh, states of the United States. And uh, this is the Iolani Palace. It was uh, built in the 1880s, but shortly after its construction, the, the Hawaii was annexed. Uh, and the last queen, Lili Kualani, uh, was confined in the Washington, Washington place. That's the, the picture uh, at, the at the bottom. Uh, in the year of 1893. And uh, the, this is a picture top, at the top, the, the picture of neighborhood named Waimanalo, the poor neighborhood, and uh, uh, descendants of native Hawaiians still live in uh, the poor neighborhood uh, still nowadays. And uh, the two professors at the uh, bottom 
is a leading scholar named uh, Professor Yamamoto and Professor McKenzie uh, at the University of Hawaii. Uh, the leading scholars of na Native Hawaiian reparations issues. Okay. And uh, contrary, contrary to the situation in Japan, uh, in, 18, in 1993, the US government made a sincere apology, apology decision at the, uh, the Congress level. And uh, in 1999, the reconciliation report uh, was issued, and it admitted the moral responsibility and the self-determination principles of Native Hawaiians. Oh, this is <laughs> the $20, uh, $20 bill of uh, the uh, United States, and this is the person named Andrew Jackson. Andrew Jackson is very good at self-appeal, and many American people uh, still think he's an American hero. And this is a picture of a uni uh, Jackson Square in New Orleans. But actually, he, he committed a grave past injustice towards American Indians, uh, named uh, Seminole, American Seminole. The Jackson took a scorched earth policy uh, towards uh, Seminole Indians and slaughtered uh, them indiscriminately a discriminatory, uh, including children and women, uh, in Seminole War that occurred in early 19th century, and established the Indian Removal Act in the year of 1830, uh, that brought brought about a trade of tears of Cherokee Indians. Now, uh, this is uh, the, some exhibits of Cherokee Indians and and uh, Seminole Indians, okay. And I met with uh, one of the descendants of the uh, Seminole Indian when I was, in, when I was uh, uh, working in the state of Florida uh, last year, uh, or the year before last. So uh, there, there are a lot of debates in the United States, but still the American reparations themselves uh, uh, are still partial and one-sided in the sense that, for example, uh, in the case of Vietnam War, the Iraq War, Afghan War, uh, as well as uh, atomic bombing in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, or carpet bombing in Tokyo, uh, there's no debate, uh, reparation debate. and. Uh, uh, Jeju uh, massacre is o was also backed at the time of a mass killing was backed by the United States. But uh, international reparations debate is still limited. But uh, reparation debate is based, uh, as I indi already indicated, based on the moral c conscience. The reparations case is still limited, but uh, it's increasing. It's been increasing, and uh, we have to enhance the debate globally. So let's uh, uh, move to the examples re re relating to Japan. Uh, first, Ainu uh, reparation case. And uh, the time is limited. I just uh, show you some of the pictures, uh, related pictures. Uh, Ainu people is a nomadic uh, uh, people, and their main occupation fishing and hunting. And they move or uh, move around, moved around in Hokkaido. But uh, they uh, lived uh, dispersedly as a community, uh, but. Uh, most of the communities were destroyed by the invasion of mainlanders, and their land of Hokkaido uh, has been conquered. But oddly, uh, still as a modern Ainu policy uh, that is going on, there, there's no reparation debate, oddly enough. Still, the Ainu people in Hokkaido have been oppressed and subordinated and most of them uh, are suffering uh, from poverty, 
problems. And we, uh, until recently, we have a discriminatory uh, legislation named Hokkaido Former Natives Protection Act, uh, modeled on uh, the General Allotment Act, uh, that is called the Dawes Act, regarding American Indians uh, in the uh, 19th centuries. And so, uh, according to the uh, discriminatory uh, act, the after uh, confiscation of the communal land, the small portion of uh, barren land was given uh, under the condition of cultivation within 15 years. And they had the restrictions on the alienation, transfer, and mortgage financing of the allotted land. So in that sense, they had no way to gain financial credit except through recourse to the long-term lease contracts. And uh, this, the left-hand side picture at uh, top is some of the their allotted land uh, very hilly, barren land. And uh, this is the, the picture of Nibutani Dam. The, there's a famous decision about Nibutani Dam. And this dam uh, was uh, uh, considered illegal according to that famous decision because uh, it submerged the sacred, sacred land of Ainu people. But you know, it's, it's hard to destroy the constructed uh, uh, Nibutani Dam. Uh, and uh, oddly, uh, there's a project of building new new dam uh, named the Biratori Dam that might also submerge the, the sacred land of Ainu people. Uh, and, uh, uh, the round circle area named Hidaka, uh, lots of Ainu people congregated still nowadays. And there's a uh, uh, trail of tears uh, for Ainu people uh, at that place. I, I dried a couple of years ago the trail of uh, uh, tears, uh, Ainu trail of tears uh, a couple of years ago. There's uh, 50 kilometers. Uh, and uh, they, they were ousted, evicted, uh, uh, due to the established establishment of the imperial uh, farmland. They lived close to that area. They, they originally uh, uh, lived there, but they are arrested, and uh, uh, they have to move to the mountainous areas far from there. And uh, OK, I, I'm going to uh, skip. And this lady in the 80s, uh, she is one of the descendants of Ainu people who, who is uh, taking care of the Ainu uh, traditional tombs. Uh, that is it. Yeah. OK, and uh, uh, let's uh, talk about some other uh, Japan-related reparation cases. Oh, oh OK. <laughs> And due to time limitation, I skip. And uh, let's think about uh, why those legal claims have been dismissed in many cases. There are a number of reasons. First, uh, passing of time, the <coughs> prescription, and lack of evidence as a factual ma matter, and uh, legal principles related to passage of time uh, and uh, state immune there's a state immunity doctrine and there's a fourth there's a also a waiver clause in the international treaties as i already mentioned and uh, uh, but we have to realize that each reason can be critically re-examined as follows as for prescription the as uh, the Korean Supreme Court case shows, the defendant has to refer to the legal institution of prescription in order to be immunized from legal responsibility. However, in case of hideous mass tort, such as the Holocaust or the Nanchi massacre, 
uh, we could argue that the defendant's rights of referral should be restricted, uh, should be considered the abuse of rights. So as a matter of fact, as you know, the, we have such an inter international treaty regarding the Holocaust. And this is the Nanshin Massacre Museum, uh, 300,000 uh, Nanshin citizens have been slaughtered uh, in the year of 1937 uh, in December and the uh, sculptures of the miserable. The, the, they are, many people bundled up on the riverbed of uh, Yanchen River. And uh, furthermore, the starting point as for the prescriptions for calculation could be postponed, considering the difficulty relating to the litigations uh, mentioned already. For example, in China, ordinary victims came to realize the possibility of filing lawsuits at the grassroots uh, individual level as opposed to the nation level only when the Chinese government officially admitted the possibility of the private litigation in the mid-1990s. In these cases, we, we could calculate the term of prescription from that point instead of uh, from the time of uh, mass killing. Uh, this is a picture uh, with uh, Professor Emeritus, uh, Yun jong -wok. Uh she's, uh, she's a pioneering scholar about comfort women issues. She herself, when she was a high school student, almost arrested, but uh, she, she was lucky eh, not to uh, become sex slave. And she eh, became a, a, a professor of uh, Ifa University, the very famous uh, women's university in, in Seoul. Uh, and her speciality is English literature. But after her retirement from Ifa University, he started to work on uh, comfort women issues, and he uh, publicized a series of articles and uh, uh, after her uh, investigation on uh, comfort women. Okay, so, and the second, uh, uh, the state immunity doctrines, and, uh, and third, there are these pictures of uh, the bronze statue in, in front of the Japanese embassy in Seoul, and I joined the Thousand Memorial Wednesday protest rally in myself a couple of years ago. Uh, this is also the Statue of Comfort to Women at the uh, House of Sharing that is in the outskirts of Seoul, and uh, uh, several Comfort to Women survivors uh, live to, still living together. Most of them very old and uh, uh, the, the 80s and 90s, and, uh, uh, and I visited that house of sharing many times. And this is a site of Chongqing bombing, 18 steps, and uh, many people have been killed on, the, uh, on this staircase uh, in those days. Uh, for several years, the uh, uh, Japanese army bombed uh, Chongqing, uh, in the inland China uh, for several years. And this is the uh, first, case, first uh, indiscriminatory bombing case. And uh, one of the survivors uh, showed me around uh, the bombing site. And this is a site of pest war. And uh, uh, by the uh, pest, pest virus was dropped in November 1941, and more than, more than 7,000 people were killed by a single drop of pest uh, virus. Okay. And uh, the third, the, the interpretation waiver clause uh, in international treaty is another focal point. And uh, uh, the Supreme Korean Supreme Court uh, 
uh, interpreted uh, the wave clause differently. But even in, uh, by the Japanese uh, Supreme Court case, uh, that is called Nishima, Nishimatsu decision in 2007, even though it rejected the request for legal reparations uh, by adopting this defense, but on the other hand, uh, such a waiver clause, uh, uh, I think, is against uh, public policy and invalid by the standard domestic Japanese civil law. And the uh, Supreme Court, uh, justice, Supreme Court justice themselves, uh, the company, related company, a company owed moral, moral uh, obligations, uh, had moral uh, uh, reparations uh, that is named, uh, to use the legal term, the obligatio nat naturalis. Okay. So uh, the legal reparations are partial in this sense and sometimes contingent on many accidental factors, the lack, such as lack of evidence of passing of time. And we have to uh, re-examine the related legal doctrine critically. <coughs> but it should be also noticed that the legal reparation, even if they are important, are not a panacea for the past tragedies and not the only solution for reconciliation. So, um, so next, uh, let's. Uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about mechanism of reparations and uh, reconciliation. That that is the key point of today's lecture. The the process of uh, sorry the. The process of rep, uh, reconciliation or reparation is as follows. First, fact findings about past injustice. And second, admission of past injustice or admission of responsibility from the perpetrator's side based on detailed fact findings. So to, ma to make third, the apology, sincere apology and reparations. So uh, to make sincere apology as a requisite, they have to admit the detailed past injustice, past, uh, past uh, facts, facts of detailed facts of past injustice. And then, uh, possibly, from the victim's side, there might be forgiveness. And notice that the latter stage is presupposed by the former stage. Okay? So, okay, I have to skip a lot of cases. So, uh, as I omit, already mentioned, the atonement function uh, played uh, important roles as opposed to monetary compensation. So, the and I I use the term of uh, reparations in the broader sense, and it includes, in addition to monetary uh, damages. Uh, it includes uh, the following uh, uh, things. And until recently, still nowadays, the legal academics or legal practitioners or legal activists as well are uh, overwhelmed by the monetary damages uh, centrism. But uh, as I uh, already mentioned, the sincere apology based on moral repentance uh, should be uh, emphasized as opposed to uh, ordinary uh, monetary damages. 
And uh, uh, so it includes uh, historical education, constru construction memorials, because the importance of acknowledgement of past injustice by the perpetrator side. And also it includes uh, symbolic actions of apology in front of victims themselves uh, instead of uh, uh, George Bush. In 2007, uh, the Prime Minister Abe, uh, regarding the comfort winning issues, uh, uh, visited White House and she made some apology. <laughs> in front of George Bush, but it's a uh, it's very odd situation. And uh, uh, listening to that news, uh, the comfort women themselves in Korea are very upset. And then fourth, the return of remains of relatives. There are serious uh, uh, return of remains issues regarding Ainu uh, problems. Uh, OK, uh, I, I'm going to stop. This is one of the. The lot of Ainu bones was, was stolen by many uh, medical professors of Hokkaido universities, and we, uh, the reparations issue is still lurking. And uh, the no Ainu bones, uh, Ainu bones are missing at almost all Ainu tombs. Uh, can you imagine that? And uh, recently, there's a uh, uh, Ainu uh, litigation regarding the stolen bones. And there should also be, there should be rituals for tragedies and genocides because of the importance for the consol consolation of the victims, damaged feelings. Okay, I'm going to skip the theoretical part, and I al already uh, explained this uh, process of reconciliation. And through this theoretical framework, you can easily understand how badly and poorly Japan has been proceeding toward the genuine uh, reconciliation. As I already mentioned, in the, in the case of comfort women, former and present Prime Minister Abe and other cabinet members denied the facts of coerciveness and even the existence of notorious institution itself in, in spite of new, numerous testimonies by the comfort women themselves. Against this back, backdrop, you can imagine how empty the Abe's expression of apology to George Bush sounded to the victims. And, okay, I'm going to skip. This is uh, I, uh, the picture taken when I visited one of the survivors uh, of the Nanshi massacres. He showed me uh, scars, even though I didn't ask the, her to do that. But, uh, so uh, there's an uh, internationalization of reparations going on. But still, uh, those debates are still one-sided, as I already mentioned. And uh, talking of slavery, I visited Haiti and Jamaica. And the Caribbean country is at, at the forefront of the international slavery uh, reparations debate. Uh, she is one of the leading scholars, uh, Professor Shepard, Commissioner in Chief on the international slavery reparations in the West Indies. The picture of uh, uh, slave laborers there. And the big uh, mansion um, built by the slave laborers. Okay, and uh, uh, the reasons for delayed reparation in Japan as follows. And, uh, and uh, lastly, let's think about, I'm uh, I'm not, uh, I'm quite new. I'm uh, not an expert of the uh, Indian social issues. But why don't you think about if you have any reparation cases here in these countries? The, the issues that came to mind 
uh, uh, for example, the Gujarat pogrom in 2002, or the Bhopal disaster in 1984, or the infringement traditional knowledge. Uh, there's uh, international uh, exploitation of uh, uh, genetic resources here in this country by the uh, developed nations, big firms. So there are international reparations issues are looking. So I left my, the book about Martha Nussbaum. He, uh, she published recently uh, a book named The Religious Clash that described the Gujarat pogrom in 2002. And uh, uh, the, in, in February 2002, the Gra Gujarat riots uh, by radical Hindus occurred, and it, it, it resulted in the deaths of uh, 800 Muslims, uh, and uh, death, and uh, uh, 254 Hindus. Uh, but as for the deaths of Muslims, uh, allegedly it, it was up to 2,000. And uh, uh, 2,000, more than 2,000 uh, people have been injured uh, and uh, uh, more than 200 people are missing uh, by uh, the, the riot. And there are also instances of rape, uh, burnt children, uh, widespread looting and destruction of property. And Martha Nussbaum, the famous uh, scholar of uh, legal philosophy at the University of Chicago argued uh, there is a broad consensus by now that the Gujarat violence was a form of ethnic cleansing. It's a picture of a uh, uh, train burning. By this burning, uh, the, the 59, uh, around 60 people uh, were burned to death, and most of them are Hindu pilgrims and religious workers. And after that, the, the Gujarat pogrom started, as I mentioned. And uh, uh, after this tragedy, the Chief Minister Modi was accused. However, in 2012, his complicity was denied by the special investigation team appointed by the uh, Indian Supreme Court. And it also rejected the claim that the state government had not done enough to prevent riots. The Muslim community reacted with anger and disbelief. The activist uh, said al said that the legal process was incomplete. And in July 2013, allegations were made that the commission uh, had suppressed evidence. However, the Indian court upheld uh, the commission report in December uh, 2013, that's the last year. And the Supreme Court also rejected as baseless a plea, plea contesting the SIT report uh, this year. Uh, on the other hand, the, the government announced uh, 3.2 billion rupees relief for the victims of riots on May, in May 2008. However, Gujarat reparations are still unfinished business, as you understand. And then we are going to move to Bhopal disaster. Over 500,000 people were exposed uh, to methyl uh, cyanide gas uh, released from the Union Carbide Li India Limited, UCIL, pesticide plant in Bhopal in December uh, 1984. And 40 tons of MIC gas release was uh, the world industrial, worst industrial disaster. And uh, uh, almost 4,000 people have been killed 
according to other resources, 8,000 have been killed within two weeks. And uh, uh, some more, a uh, lot of people have been struggling uh, with diseases, related diseases in many ways. Uh, Long-term health effects in include eye problems, chronic conjunctivitis, scars and cornea, or res respiratory disease, a neurological system malfunction, psychological problems, children's disease, uh, and re reproductive aberrations uh, on cancer and immune deficiency. Uh, about 120,000 to uh, 150,000 survivors still struggling uh, with serious medical conditions. Uh, this is uh, a famous uh, movie, and many of you might have seen that movie named uh, Bhopal, A Prayer for Rain. And this is the memorial in Bhopal, and some of the uh, deteriorating portion of a uh, plant. But the, uh, the series, uh, I described a series of uh, uh, events, related events. And uh, in 1989, by the out of course settlement, UCC agreed to pay a 470 million damages for the Bhopal disaster, which was only 15% of the original 3 billion claim in the lawsuit. Even though the amount was paid immediately, you can understand how limited the relief uh, has been. A lot of uh, uh, legal process. Uh, but I'm going to skip, sorry. And uh, uh, thirdly, the talking of uh, traditional knowledge infringement, uh, the the considerable uh, commercial value of TK is vulnerable to misappropriation, as I already mentioned. So, uh, and uh, uh, traditional knowledge doesn't match enough with individualistic intellectual property legal scheme. So there are a lot of uh, international debates for the protection of TK, uh, such as including uh, Nagoya Protocol in 2010, but still limited. There's uh, also regional uh, efforts uh, by uh, most pro prominent by, by India uh, and some other developing countries and uh, examples uh, uh, the protection of patent varieties, fairness rights act or some other uh, treaties but still limited so uh, in the end the final Rem remarks as follows. Reparation issues have been marginalized, as I mentioned at the beginning of this lecture, in the civil law scholarship until recently, but will be one of the most important fields in the 21st century. Second, reparations are still unfinished business in many fields. Third, reparations are interdisciplinary fields and require moral analysis as opposed to legal analysis. And the ultimate goal is reconciliation and relation rebuilding. And fourth, Japan is far behind the goal of reconciliation. And there is much to learn from neighboring countries' arguments uh, in East Asia and South Asia. That's it. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>